So we are starting the last session of the Cisco Networking Innovation Forum. And for that, we, ha we have a Steve, a Steve Pickabans, a director of a customer experience, who is going to join us to share some best practices from a customer around the globe on how they are getting the maximum value on their uh, Cisco solution investment. Remember that uh, you have the live Q&A available, so use the Q&A panel to ask your questions. Uh, we will uh, uh, cover some of the questions at the end of uh, the session. And now, welcome, Steve, and over to you. Thanks for the introduction there. Hi, guys. Welcome to today's final session. I'm looking forward to taking you through how we optimize IT investments. I'm going to share with you a number of different scenarios. And we're going to start with thinking about what the current operating model is, trend, and six of those that are becoming the reality, and then future state with success tracks, how we pull all these things together and accelerate those outcomes. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how the customers themselves have executed and where you can get more help to look at how you yourselves can execute this journey, whether you're a customer or whether you're a partner. So with that, let's start thinking about what the state we're in today. It's about a break fix environment, reactive and people based. So rather than looking at it through those lens, we've got a set of capabilities that we move from towards this much more enriched lifecycle type of capabilities, being proactive, being predictive, and bringing our people together to learn greater capabilities and deliver better insights and an overall experience that really ensures that we optimize what we're building, how we're returning investment around that and how we able visibility, automation and orchestration to become a reality. These are the types of things we're seeing our customers benefit from, but it's been against a backdrop of challenge. The challenges that our customers tell us they constantly face is about rigidity of the infrastructure, the high cost of integration and the high complexity. When it comes to rigidity, they don't have the visibility that they'd like to see. They'd like to get a greater degree of automation. They'd like to work out how they get there through orchestration of their environment. And that helps them in the addressing of the cost of integration and reducing that complexity. And they talk about two customers later on that have achieved those results. And they've done so by thinking about moving. As we talk to many of our customers, a lot of them are in this mode of moving from responsiveness towards a proactive sort of state. Ultimately, where most of our customers want to be, that 71%, isn't that predictive and business optimized over on the right. And over the next two years, they plan to get there. And boy, has recent times helped accelerate some of that. In fact, we're working with a couple of customers at the moment that, in their own words, they've just done three years of transformation in three months all because of COVID, um, but enabled by capabilities that IBM's brought to bear for them. As we've talked with these customers, they find it hard though to move from that reactive responsive stage to be truly proactive. And a lot of that comes back to what I mentioned a minute ago. They have the rigidity in the infrastructure they've got, they've not quite got the investment capabilities where they need to be. And those that are adopting IBM and have benefited from the DNA capabilities that are built within that architecture have really been able to move towards that proactive and predictive stage. And they're working towards the optimized. And that has been through focus and focus towards priorities. As we think about what we're seeing in market, it really has become about reducing time to market adapting to the changes. I mean, again, I don't need to stress this enough, but you've all lived through this recently and how COVID has suddenly swung that change in an accelerated fashion. That faster type of market and reduced cost, though, have been the predominant factors that we hear most of from our customers as we look at what they need from software-centric networks. And that is what they're getting as the primary benefit. These are the main benefits that they're seeing come to bear. And that greater responsiveness, being able to see the environment as a single pane of glass, being able to react to elements that have caused problems, whether that's been something simple in the environment that would have taken weeks to uncover because it was not visible to them, and how that then becomes a simple fix overall. With that focus on priorities, 
there's this underlying pressure to perform and transform, right? So those barriers that we started talking about earlier is being compounded by that lack of speed. How do you get to move faster when you don't have the enablement there with your architecture? Because it's either complex or you've got the skills gap in and underpinning that. And of course, there's not short of investment in this space, but that investment hasn't always materialized itself as a benefit. And 80% of transformation have failed to reach their goals simply because if either the complexity not being addressed or the skills gap not being addressed in enabling transformation to happen at a pace that was required and compounding that lack of speed issue. Um, I'm going to provide you in the notes section of this a number of different case studies that you can look at that help you understand how to break through on that transformation side. But getting us there, there's trends. How are we going to address this? There's really six simple steps. With the capabilities in IBM, we've been able to introduce NetOps extended monitoring that helps people see, especially those moving towards a cloud-first strategy, where the environment is performing, what the visibility of that is at a network level, whether it's within the LAN environment, whether that is across your factories, whether that is across the internet and being able to tell what the services are doing from an assurance stance, which is the second point. Being able to do model-based change management, change management in the sense of I need to upgrade the images across my estate and do so in a optimal orchestrated manner, which we've been able to do with SWIM, being able to bring software image management into an automated state. The underlying architecture itself, being able to drive that in a way in which we've got self-healing workflows within the environment so that service is continual and that service can be sustained in the most challenging of times. And bringing that together in point five here in a single pane of glass, being able to see your network posture alongside your security posture and operate from a single source of truth. So there's greater control within the environment. And then lastly, and some of our customers often tell us that they've been challenged with build, building that bridge between business and IT, giving visibility to the business services, the processes, the applications, and the infrastructure has been one of the key things that they've told us they've often wanted to look at getting. And we've been able to bridge that gap. You'll hear about that as we talk about Haribo in a couple of minutes. But these are the trends that have underpinned some core strategy shifts that have enabled our customers and partners really to move at a pace and address that faster time to market and address the ability to orchestrate change within an environment in a cost-effective, orchestrated and automated manner. Achieving that, I would lay up into these buckets. Very simply, enabling structure changes to happen faster, understanding the risk profile, the posture from a security standpoint, and do it reliably and with performance. We get that through DNA. Enable high service dynamicity, being able to add capabilities to the infrastructure quickly and fastly, which also plays into the velocity, that time to market element, being able to deploy services faster within the infrastructure. I'm going to hear about that from Newcastle City, who have done that as a like, digital leader in smart cities. They've enabled those capabilities to provide services to their customers. And of course, automation is at the heart of this, being able to take calories out, take that people aspect out of the change complexity that's required and do so in an automated manner. And really get that kind of flexibility of innovation of pace of change that we get through cloud, linking up with what we do within the cloud world. We're working with Azure and with Amazon and Google to connect all these elements together and enhance that in a qualitative manner and get compliance around what we do so that we've got good understanding of the estate today, what we need tomorrow, and where do we take that in future as we add new service capabilities and map that out in that single pane view. And being able to do that has to think with this life cycle motion. You know, when we evaluate and select capabilities, how do we then implement, use, and engage those and adopt and optimize them? This is the life cycle that is at the heart of what we've been able to do with a number of our customers and partners to accelerate their journey and optimize the investments. 
we're often cited as being the best partner to help in that space and help our partners in this space to accelerate their journey with their customers. Again, we're going to talk about that during the business case studies that we've got coming up, but we think this is key to customer success, being able to deliver an experience that is life cycle in nature that is able to help the onboard adopt an optimization on a continual basis. And it's something you can apply in your own thinking with your own teams and with your own customers for the partners out there to be able to accelerate the journey. But I pose a question to you all. There's a change to the operating model. If we think about the top of this picture, what is it saying to you? It's a meandering, wandering path in the current operating model. How do we deal with infrastructure today? Do we have the right deployment plan? Have we right training? Has my partner got the right validation of the preliminary designs that we're doing? Oh, we've hit a bug. How do we get to tack? Um, we've got new requirements that come in. Oh, we missed that dependency. Um, need some partner help to meet a committee timeline. Each of these things are adding either cost, time, complexity, and backwards and forwards. The path you can be on here, the path we advocate you take, is about getting into this life cycle mode of thinking. Think about that onboard adopt and optimize elements in a way in which you're starting with that planning and budgeting in mind and meaningful use case driven content that can help you accelerate rather than path wander and give you that proven adoption path that will make sure your success is on time, in budget and optimal. That's the advocate that we'd have for the customer life cycle ensuring and be at your heart your customer success. Ask your partners to help you with that journey. Ask your partners to help you with success learnings that they have together with Cisco that can enable that. Ask us to help you with that journey. I'm going to give you some materials at the end that can help explain that, some learning and success path track elements that will help. Let's talk about Haribo, though, a customer that is benefiting from this today. They were founded in 1922. Um, for you, those that might not be familiar, I'm sure you'll have seen their suites in the uh, the shops, whether that's at the airport or in your your um, life. It's, it's one of the one great memories I have. Little gummy bears. And these guys make hundred million of these a day, a hundred million a day, and that's in their global factories. And, and they chose IBM to help them enable a new generation of network. At the heart of this, they went for IBM. So SDA and DNAC, ICE, and uh, next generation firewall capabilities to enable their security fabric and really simplify their environment. But what did they do with that? Let's look at some of the stats. It was to them about capability, compliance, time to resolve, and cost. But at the heart of this, they moved from weeks to minutes to provision moves. They reduced their operation costs. I mean, 27% cited reduction in operating costs. That's significant an 80% reduction in troubleshooting. We'll show you how we laid those stats out with some of our surveys that we did with them and some of the follow-on work that we're working on right now. But fundamentally, the, fun the fundamentals of this is it was faster time to market and reduce costs. So we think back about those optimization of uh, challenges that they face. Well, this is how they've done it. They've got the capability. They've now got the compliance under control. The time to resolve issues is less, much less than it was in the past, and the costs have been reduced. Alongside that, they've also been able to get visibility of the environment and consistent view into performance and be able to deploy policies and do things in a more secure manner. Uh, to quote the, the uh, head of networks at, uh, at Haribo, he would look at it this way. He says, Steve, this, this enables for us a real capability to deliver our manufacturing and do so in a consistent, seamless manner. It enables our business to ensure that our ERP, our SAP systems, are constantly able to manage to the demand of getting those billions of gummy bears out every year. Billions. And I think that's a fundamental for them is that the reliable infrastructure built on IBM with visibility through DNA is able to help them address what they've looked for in terms of capability, compliance, and reduction in costs. Let me introduce another one to you. Think about our partners working with us in this case with Newcastle City Council. 
um, together with SAC, one of our partners here in the UK. Um, Newcastle is a winner, and a winner in many dimensions, but most notably for a Digital Smart City Award in the last year. They needed a capability to help them address over 300 sites, everything from police and NHS, libraries, schools. So they needed a secure capability, they needed a reliable capability. And they turned to Cisco and SCC to enable that to happen. Uh, they deployed SDA to be able to deliver the network fabric that would give them the flexibility of work across the city. And they wanted to address three things. They wanted to address the environment in which citizens can access information freely in the facilities that their staff were able to get great access to services and do so securely, especially when it comes to things like schools or the police environments. Um, they wanted to be able to reduce costs with another primary aspect in their three-point plan that they were looking to do. And lastly, to be known as an innovator, a great innovator of tech. And that was one of the key aspects that they stood alongside them in this change that they enacted. So with such a vibrant city, what they did was look at transforming the network just to drive them single pane of glass visibility, improve their security and compliance, being able to deploy new software images across that environment swiftly and without any error introduced at a human level. That's automating their management and change aspects. The reduction in time to deploy capabilities in the environment was one of the other benefits that they unlocked all underpinning that faster time to resolution and reduce costs. So as we think about that coming together, um, this is really the kind of summary of what I'm telling you here is, it's about lower costs, faster response to resolution, better satisfaction. A little survey that we conducted with a number of our customers and partners around this is, it summed up as being better, less resource, better and easier when you have these capabilities in place. Those improvements might be as much as a reduction of 80% in investigation time and issues or 50% reduction in time to, to actually restore from the issues you've seen. Lastly, I want to have you think about this. It's about insights and you get those insights when you have the right network architecture in place that you enable that with the IBM capabilities and through DNAC. You get a life cycle approach and we're helping our customers and partners adopt that life cycle approach and drive success in a way in which they can unlock that onboard, adopt, optimize in a continual manner and provide visibility, that digital experience and being able to connect back with Cisco and be able to look at things in a connected manner. That insight working together with the customers, with our partners is helping them optimize investments and delivering them experience from other customers, use cases, accelerators, and ways in which they can move quicker and faster to their investment optimization. That's where I want to leave you with a few pointers to help. Um, number of resources are here that can help you um, in terms of accelerators. So we have a learning network that shows you the Cisco DNA accelerators. There's a whole slew of information there that can help you on this journey. We have our success hub that can unlock a little bit more of that for you and show how we can guide the success path in this in a life cycle based manner. For our partners out there, there's information that can help you on that journey to help the customers in this. And then lastly, we've got a little video here that you can look at that will tell you the story about Newcastle. You can hear from them themselves the benefits that they've unlocked and hear from them about what they've been able to experience on the journey working with us and our partners. So back to the studio. Thanks very much for listening. Thank you, Steve. A great, a great session on showing uh, how we can uh, get the maximum on the on the uh, Cisco investment in, in IT. And there has been uh, a few uh, questions got coming in into the uh, Q and A panel. So let's uh, go through uh, uh, some of the most common themes that uh, we can see there. So one of the the areas that uh, people are uh, are talking about is about uh, uh, once they are implemented some of uh, uh, these uh, uh, best practices, the most challenging thing many times is not about the implementation, it's about how they capture the investment improvements. So mm -hmm. how do you recommend that they uh, they do that? Or how do you, do you see 
customers doing that in a very uh, effective way? I, I, I think actually pre-implementation about that, it's uh, get a baseline. So what does it take today? How long does it take you to implement a capability in a project sense? So I want to install new network. I want to add to that change of policy. Measure those in a baseline way today, where it takes you either days or weeks to do something. And then baseline again, once you've implemented capability. And the delta between the two helps you measure reduction in time, reduction in resource cost, travel, for example, um, where we previously would add travel to a site. You know, that is now done in a centralized manner. That adds up a co to cost reduction. So capturing these things, baseline first on the as is, and then baseline again when you're reaching that future state. And the delta between the two helps you really understand your saving. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, there are also, and I'm afraid that uh, you are going to say that this is what you are sharing currently in the uh, in the slide, but uh, uh, questions about where we can learn more about the uh, success tracks, and uh, maybe if you can spend uh, some time uh, explaining a little bit further what the success tracks are. Yes, yes. So we, we have a number of success tracks that we've developed. Um, those cover um, a number of different technologies. If we just take the IBM one that we're showing here, um, that will lead you through how do I get my journey underway with SDA? How do I get my journey underway with DNAC? How do I unlock the benefits and capabilities of each of the functional um, core strengths within, uh, say, DNAC? Well, let's take software and compliance. How do I assess my estate and do image upgrades? How do I do configuration change? Um, how do I extend and get access to some of the great things Tina talked about earlier um, by adding new functional capabilities into the existing installations? So that is covered in depth in the IBM Accelerators. We have a number of different talks that we can take people through. I would encourage people to go to the links that we share here to learn more about that as it relates to, say, DNA. In Success Hubs, you'll see that expand out into other accelerator tracks covering a number of other technology areas that we have. Uh, you're muted. Oh. <laughs> there, is, there is one. <laughs> Sorry for that. So there is one question now, a, a little bit more specific about which, um, according to your experience, which elements in uh, the Cisco solutions uh, it could be in SD one or access so wide and wireless are uh, will greatly reduce the customer TCO, and which ones are maybe a uh, less preferable, but uh, still acceptable. I don't know if you can... Uh... Yeah, sure. Well, let, let me take those two examples you're offering. There. It's, 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 an SD-WAN, to, to me, is, is moving from you know, legacy connectivity to direct internet access. Um, the internet in itself is a phenomenal vehicle that we can now utilize for replacement of our traditional connectivity via fixed line or MPLS type services. There's a cost performance envelope around that where previously we may have paid a few thousands per site for a limited set of connectivity in fixed line, or even more when it was dedicated MPLS type services. In a direct internet access, we can get higher quality, frankly, because we've got quantity of service within that for a much lower price envelope. And to put that into context, there's some customers where the average cost per site might have been a few thousand per connection are now in the few hundreds per connection for 10 times the bandwidth. Um, so if you think about it this way is, the quality has increased, the bandwidth has increased, the cost has gone down by over 50% from 1,000 from to 500, um, and in some cases much more. Okay, thank you, thank you, Steve. I think that, that uh, with that, we are gonna conclude the, uh, the Q&A. Uh, this was, uh, the last session for the Cisco Networking Innovation Forum. And uh, I want to uh, thank all of you and every one of you to, uh, uh, for your participation uh, across these uh, uh, two days. Uh, if we look back for the last two days, uh, we have talked about latest market dynamics. We have talked about how to convert your network in a multi-domain, multi-experience platform. Uh, we have uh, a cover how you can create additional services leveraging some of the latest technologies like artificial intelligence, like a Wi-Fi 6, uh, SD-WAN, or enhanced location-based uh, uh, services. 
Uh, we have uh, also talked about how you can leverage the network to adapt to the new reality and reopen your business. And uh, finally, in this last session, we have shared uh, uh, how you can extract the maximum value, the highest value from uh, uh, your investment. I want to remind you one last time about the survey. So it's a short survey, so please uh, take the survey. We want to hear uh, what you think about the session and we want to improve for the next event. You will enter a draw to, to, uh, to win one of uh, uh, the Apple AirPods. Also remember that all the sessions are going to be recorded and available for you in the same location where uh, you register. And finally, I want to say that it's been my pleasure to be your host across these two days. I hope you have enjoyed the event and a big thank you for from the whole team uh, uh, working on the event and from uh, in the name of Cisco. So thank you and uh, see you soon.